Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we have a solo gameplay of Oath for you. Very excited to get down into this and show you what's going on. This is actually going to be a solo gameplay where I am the Chancellor. I managed to take the Chancellorship from the Prince the last game. And so you're going to get to see what it's like when you are already the Chancellor. You're not playing as an exile. You're not trying to fight your way up in the solo game. Uh... There's a, a couple of things here and there that I get wrong. I think I catch most of them. Uh, one of the things I don't catch till the second video, which is that when the Chancellor, or I'm sorry, when the Prince is putting out sight cards, he doesn't have to be at a site. He just puts it out at the first site that's available, that, that has a spot available. So I start, I figure that out right around round three or four, which is the second video. So be sure to just keep that in mind when you're watching. Before we get into the game itself, I want to mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a fantastic website where you can buy, sell, and trade games. I have a great selection to choose from if you're just looking to build out your collection. If you're just looking to, you know, if you got some holes to fill in your collection, Board Game Co. can help you find those games. They also will buy games from you. If you're just trying to clear out your collection, some make some room or you need some cash, they can help you out. And then, of course, they also have a trade feature. This is really cool. If you have a Board Game Geek account and you've set up a trade list over there, you can then go over to Board Game Co., drop your Board Game Geek username into Board Game Co. It'll compare your trade list to their stock and build a custom trade list right there on their website. It makes it very easy to make a trade. I highly recommend it. If you do, check them out. Click on the link in the description below so they know I sent you over there. Board Game Co. makes it easy to buy, sell, and trade your way into a better collection. All right, so one last thing before we get into the video. I am going to be doing a giveaway for a full set of Oath sleeves. Leader Games was kind enough to provide these when they sent me Oath. However, I just don't sleeve my games anymore. I did when I first got into the hobby. I don't know. I, I like the feel of the cards. I just don't I just don't sleeve anymore. But I know a lot of people love sleeving their games. A lot of people really need to sleeve their games you know whatever it is if you want sleeves for your game you're gonna have a chance to win these in the second part of this gameplay which will be coming out in just a couple of days i'm gonna have a contest set up most of my contests last four weeks this one's just gonna be two weeks just a real quick contest and you will have your chance to win these like i said this is a full set it looks like uh yeah it's got 209 denizen vision edifice sleeves 23 site sleeves 21 relic sleeves they're all in here so be sure to come back for part two and you can win yourself a set of sleeves okay so here we go uh first off excuse my uh voice i've got a little bit of a cold but we're gonna get through this so i have played uh two full games of oath prior to this and the situation we find ourselves in is that I actually managed to become the Chancellor at the end of the last game. So I'm the Oath Keeper. Uh, we're playing Oath Keeper of Devotion, which means the Oath Keeper holds the darkest secret, which you can see right here. I'm definitely going to want to get more secrets on that banner so that I can hold on to it better. Because right away, he's going to start working towards taking that from me. Um... The Clockwork Prince normally is the purple when they're the Chancellor. They're going to be blue this time. Uh, I'm going to be purple even though my uh, my normal color is black. So you've got the Clockwork Prince over here. He's going to maintain this the threat. He's going to consider the threat to be a successor. That's just the the place whenever he's not the, the Chancellor. Uh, that is the, the threat that he uses to try to then main, re regain that title. He's starting with three warbands, one favor, one secret. I'm starting with three warbands, two favor, one secret. I have the Grand Scepter. I have one advisor uh, that you start the game with. So I chose Augury. Uh, draw one more card. So this I can either keep as a personal advisor or I can play it up here, which I'm thinking about. Um, Except that I can't replace hospital right now. I'd have to take the people's favor to replace hospital, which I could take in my first turn because I've got two favor here. The people's favor starts with one, so I could actually manage to take that. I would then be able to replace hospital with Augury if I wanted to. I also could use it as a personal advisor, um, which could be good too. But right now it's a face down advisor. I'm 100% honest, I'm not sure exactly how the Princely Reliquary is going to come into play. 
I know that I have it because um, I take this board when I'm the chancellor and the prince is in exile. So I'm assuming, well, we'll try to figure that out as we go along. The This is the clockwork mind over here. The uh, He's going to start right here because he starts... When successor is the threat, he starts on the icon with the successor goal. You see the successor goal is um, to hold the Grand Scepter. So the Clockwork Prince is going to be coming after the Grand Scepter initially. Or actually, I think he's going to come after the Scepter specifically, but he may just be... Well, we'll, we'll follow his mind here in a minute and see exactly how that all goes out. To give you an idea of where the, the world deck is right now, the first, so I say I've played two full games. I also did kind of a, a learning thing the first time. And as part of that, I, I, you know, went through building the Chronicle or writing the Chronicle. And part of that is adding cards to the world deck and taking some cards out. That first time, uh, Arcane got added. So there was three Arcane, two Order, and one Hearth added in there. The second time, which was the full game, the Prince won and added arcane as well so again three more arcane cards got put in two order and six hearth and then when uh when i played this last game and won uh, i added order so it was three order two hearth and one beast card got added in and then uh the way cards are taken out is at the when you're writing the chronicle the discarded cards are all shuffled together and six are removed at random and put into the um, uh, dispossessed spot in the box. And so those cards are just out for the immediate future. So the locations that we have available right here, uh, you can see both of us are starting over here at Standing Stones. Standing Stones, every time you play an arcane card, you're going to gain a secret. Uh, it has this relic that... Uh, we that just got put on the board there, so we haven't really looked at it yet. Um, the Great Spire is an edifice that was built by the prince. Uh, you could spend a secret there, or you could place a secret there uh, to swap any number of denizens you draw with random cards from the dispossessed. And then the hospital. If any of your warbands would be killed, place them on hospital's site instead if you still rule it. And to claim this relic, it'll cost uh, three favor. We'll go to the arcane favor bank. All right, and then we've got the wastes. If you play a uh, discord card here, uh, a discord advisor to the site, then or um, denizen to the site, then you can claim the relic. Alternatively, you can burn two f secrets to claim the relic. Um, let's see. So both of these, by the way, this one can hold two denizens or, or cards. So the edifice counts. So it's maxed out and this one can hold one. So it's maxed out as well. It has dazzle here when played discard all when played discard all hearth and order cards at sites in your region. So you can see it's sort of just kind of taking up space here. Uh, really isn't doing anything worthwhile after that initial play. And so that'd be one that we definitely want to try to get rid of if possible. Uh, skeleton key is the, uh, the the relic here. You can put one secret on here and burn one secret. And then you, it gives you an action. If the chancellor rules your site, peek at any one relic in the imperial reliquary and you may take it. And then we've got the mountain over here. So at the mountain, when defending the mountain, the attacker is going to lose one, uh, one attack die. Um, we've got the old oak. If trading with the old oak for secrets, gain one more secret if you have any beast advisors. And then the sprawling rampart, which I actually built. Each site ruled by sprawling rampart, uh, by sprawling rampart's ruler, adds one more defense die when targeted. And then finally, over there in the hinterland, we have the shroud of wood. Uh, you can see it has a relic that we haven't seen yet. Um, It'll cost one, burn one secret to claim that relic. And uh, it has the ability that you can travel to anywhere for two, um, for two supply as opposed to the normal cost. 
uh, for supply, which is pretty good having that in the hinterland because normally the hinterland is pretty expensive to travel into and out of. Or I should say traveling within the hinterland is expensive and then traveling all the way over here is expensive. I think right off the bat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recover the people's favor. Now, this might be a little early, but I want to put as much pressure on the prince as possible first thing. Plus, I want to get rid of hospital uh, because honestly, like, yeah, I've got it right now, so it's good. But it's been a pain with the prince having access to hospital. Um, so I'm going to spend one supply because we're going to do the recover action. One supply. So then we're taking the banner of people's favor. All right, so let's see. Put more favor here than the old. So there's the old one. There's my favor going on there. All right. Put the old favor in the favor banks one by one, starting with any suit. Um, we'll go with Arcane because that's going to be one of our primary money makers right now. All right, so then I'm going to take the minor action of revealing this advisor. Or actually, you know what? First, let's, let's search one time. Uh, we're going to search the supply or it costs two supply. We're going to search the world deck. So one, two, oh, and we've got a vision card. All right, so one vision card has been revealed. Um, it's a conspiracy. Anyone can play this face up. When played, you may burn secret to take one relic or banner from a player whose pawn is at your sight. Trigger its when seized, if it's a banner. To do so, you must have at least two advisors whose suits match any of their advisors return this card to the box. Huh. Well, that's not really going to help us in this situation. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess if they started claiming relics, it would. But, um, or if they claim a banner from us. Well, we'll see. Uh, bear traps kill one warband on the attacker's board. Book burning. If you're victorious and targeted in the defender's, uh, if you're. If you're victorious and target the defender's pawn, they also burn all of the secret on their board except their last. I'll tell you this. The last game, the prince racked up a lot of secrets um, and made it real tricky to hold on to the darkest secret. I'll take this as a face down advisor for now. So these are going to get discarded. So I'm here in the cradle. So they get discarded to the provinces. All right. I'm going to then take the minor action. Revealing Augury. I'm going to use the people's favor to discard hospital. And play Augury here. Now since it's a arcane card, I get one secret. Let's go ahead and take a look at this relic. We've got the Cursed Cauldron. So it's a, it's a battle plan and it can be used for attack or defense. If you're victorious, gain one warband per enemy warband killed in the campaign. That's pretty nice. All right, speaking of which, I'm going to leave. I'm, you can, as a minor action, you can uh, move your warbands between your board and sites you rule. I'm going to go ahead and put a third warband out here. Uh, just because I definitely want to hold on to that section there um it would be worth moving let's 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 reveal something real quick let's uh so to travel inside of the cradle it costs one to travel to move to the provinces from the cradle it costs two so two supply move right here we have the mine so the mine is going to start with three favor on it At the beginning of my turn, if my pawn is on the mine, I'll gain one favor. All right, there's also a relic here. And since we're here, we can peek at the relic. Circlet of command players cannot target or take your banners or other relics in campaigns. Uh, in campaigns, banishing your pawn or favor adds one more defense die. So that right there would definitely be that would definitely be something worth having. 
because um, it would pr- protect my banners from campaigns by uh, by the prince. He could still try to just claim it. He could still do the recover action, but he couldn't campaign against him until he managed to take the circlet from me first. Speaking of trying to protect the banner, uh, particularly the banner of Darkest Secret, since that's the Oathkeeper uh, goal, I'm going to go even so you can recover banners that you have. You can recover banners that you possess. And so to recover it, uh, players can only recover the banner from you if there's a card at your site whose suit does not match any of your advisors. Oh, so I, I guess I have to have a card out there. I have to put, I have to put a denizen out here. Um, well, you know what? Let's go ahead. Oh, no. Searching now costs three from the world deck. I could search. I can search for the province up there. We know the top two cards are, but the third one would be something new. We'll search. So searching a discard pile always costs two supply. Oh, wait. Hold on. I hold the darkest secret. That means that searching the world deck always only costs two supply. So I can search this. One. Two, three. All right, so we've got Kindred Warriors. Battle plan, uh, put a secret on here. Ignore all skulls you roll. Plus or minus uh, attack die up to the number of other suits you rule. Roving Terra, put a secret on here. Discard a Denizen card at any other site and move this card there. Or Battle Honors, if you're victorious, gain favor from the... Uh, order bank. All right, so I'm actually going to play Battle Honors. And, well, if I did Roving Terror, that would help me get rid of Dazzle. But I think we're going to do Battle Honors. And I'm going to put it here in my, in my advisor's. These two will get discarded to the Hinterland. I'll then actually play Book Burning as a denizen out here as a minor action. And then since I played a Discord denizen, I take one favor from the Discord bank. And now, obviously, I don't have enough supply to recover the banner of Darkest Secret, but that's something I can try to do next time. So normally, if I had any favor or secrets out on the board i would recover them at this point secrets or favor would go into the favor banks here secrets would come back to me no that's out there so then i just refresh my supply i have 17 war bands available so that's where the supply goes and then we move on to the prince all right so now it is the clockwork prince's turn now uh, first thing that you do on the Clockwork Prince's turn is to assess the threat. As I said, that when he is the exile, the threat is always going to be successor. And um, when the threat is successor, he will start over here on the icon that matches the successor icon. Next up, you can see here, next thing you do is search and then play one card. So the... Prince is going to search the deck. He's going to draw three cards. Now, you can see here, one of them is a vision. The vision is not going to get turned over. The other two cards are. It's important to keep them in order just in case you need to break a tie on which one to use. Okay? We look at the quadrant you're in here. Uh, this quadrant says you're going to play a friend. Well, down here you can see that all of the different um, suits which are kind of like factions within the world, okay? But all the different suits are currently unaligned. Obviously, it's the first round of the game. So uh, you play a friend first, otherwise you'll play unaligned, okay? Well, let's see what we've got for unaligned. We've got Secret Police, we've got Wayside Inn. So we look here, start on the leftmost side, and Hearth is the farthest to the left, which we do have a Hearth card. So that's the card we're gonna play, the Wayside Inn. These two are gonna get discarded. The prince is currently in the cradle, so they will get discarded to the provinces. All right, so let's see. So the Wayside Inn is, uh, provides an action gain to supply. So this isn't going to have any effect on the prince himself, but 
uh, he is going to play it if possible. All right, so the Prince normally would play it to their site, but they don't have uh, anywhere. The site is already full, so they can't play it there. So this card is actually going to get discarded as well. But, oh wait, we forgot. Um, whenever the Whichever suit he ends up picking to play, that one's going to move up the track, and it can either move up the Friends or the Conspirators. Since we're in the Play Friends quadrant, it moves up the Friends track. All right. Uh, he had to discard it, so you look over here, and each quadrant has its own can't play card section. In this case, it says can't play card, gain two war bands, and one tactic. All right, so that means the prince is at five war bands now. It moves up the tactic. The tactic is going to add or subtract attack dice depending on whether the prince is an attacker or a defender. So, the first off, the way we use this board here is on whatever space you're on, first you're going to look at the red uh, line coming off of it. That's the first thing. If, if that doesn't work, so here, rule most sites. No, he does not rule the most sites. So we'll move on to the second, which is this kind of orange color. Is he battle ready? Well, currently he has five war bands. He's at a site where I have three war bands. So he's going to uh, automatically roll five dice versus my three over here. So, because uh, you can see here, battle ready, you must be able to roll more attack dice than the defense force plus dice added by targets. So, my defense force is three. He's going to roll uh, five dice, so he is battle ready. So, that's a yes, so he's going to move into here. Now, if it had been a no, then he would follow the black arrow here down to muster. All right, but he is battle ready. So, it actually says travel to the um, rival site with the fewest defense force. So he's gonna travel here and then he's going to campaign. Okay, so he's moved here to the waste. Now, uh, by the way, with all the talk about which person to attack, definitely he's attacking me because I rule three sites, the bandits rule two, that makes me his rival currently. All right, so He's going to then move to the spot that has the fewest number of warbands. These two will be those two spots. He goes to the leftmost as a tiebreaker. So he moves here to the waist. All right, now he is attacking uh, here, but now he's going to try to attack multiple sites because when you're campaigning against a player, you can campaign against all of your sites if you want to. So he's going to campaign against this one. That is a total of one die so far. All right and one defense because of this so that's two defense force so far so remember he's still battle ready because he's rolling uh uh five here or four, i'm sorry six so we're gonna let's see we're gonna use two so far all right and then if he com campaigns against the mountain he's still it's still two uh more and so that's four so he's still battle ready now i wonder if the mountain's ability because the mountain takes away one die if that comes into play it's really not going to matter here because he's not going to campaign against standing stones because that's obviously going to go above the total defense force but um i'm, I'm curious i'll have to look into that anyway the mountain does def uh get rid of one die all right so now he's campaigning against the waste and the mountains so the mountains Add one die, the waste, add one die, and then one defense for each of those guys. So let's see what, what we end up with here. Oh, and I am the Oath Keeper. Does that only work if my pawn... I think it only works if my pawn is there. So actually, I think I do get an extra die for that. All right, so here we go. All right, so I rolled basically two defense plus three, four. So... Uh, four defense total. So let's see what happens with the print. Whoa, that splashed that a little bit more than I meant to. Uh, all right, so he rolled four. Now he's going to do what he has to to, uh, to be victorious. So he's going to kill one of his guys. That brings him up to five. So he does win, takes both of those from me. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. Sprawling Rampart, that gives me one extra defense die. I forgot about that. Let's roll that. Okay, so actually, so that's one, two, times two is uh, 
four, five, six. So again, he rolled four. Uh, he killed one guy ready to begin him to five, one more to six, one more to seven. All right. So he, he still wins. It was a pretty heavy uh, loss for him. Both these guys come off the map. You kill half of them, round it down. So there we go. One comes to my board, one's killed. He's going to take his last two guys and he spreads them out evenly amongst, or he puts one on each site. And so for instance, if he had three, he would put one here, one here. He can't then put one on each anymore because he only has one left and that one would stay on his board. So that pretty good first turn for the Clockwork Prince there. I mean, he lost a significant chunk of his forces, but he also managed to take two of my sights from me. All right, so then we're, he's going to ask, is he battle ready again? Well, no, he's clearly not because he doesn't have any warbands. So he'll follow the Black Arrow for his second action. Travel to the site where he can make the most money. Well, the only place that he can make money right now is at Hearth Locations. And there are no hearth locations on the board, so he's going to skip that action entirely and come up here to trade. Uh, again, he can't make any money from trade because uh, there's nowhere that matches hearth. Hearth is the only one where he can make money right now. So he's going to move up here to muster. He's going to place, he only has one favor. He's going to place that favor right here, and he's going to gather two warbands. And that was his second turn. So... Uh, he, we clean up kind of similar to how players do. That's going to go to the arcane bank. This start token though is going to go here to show that's where he's starting next turn. I just realized when he pulled that vision, this should have moved up one. All right. So two visions have been uh, revealed, which means it's, it costs three to search the world deck still. All right. So that's his turn and back to me. All right, so first thing I want to do on my turn is I am starting my turn here. You can see because of what this symbol here says, I get to take one of these favors from the mind. I then want to make the Banner of Darkest Secret. Oh, wait, hold on. First off, the very first thing I do, during my wake phase, I have to put more, uh, oh, I'm sorry, wake. You must put one favor here or remove one favor. If I remove one favor, then that makes it easier for him to claim. But, you know, then again, I don't know that he's going to try to claim it. I think he's more worried about the darkest secret or or actually even the Grand Scepter. Do I let that go? If, it, if the favor comes off, it'll go here because that has the least favor in the bank. Let's let it go for the moment. Okay. All right. And so then I want to make the Banner of Darkest Secret more secure. So I'm going to recover it for myself. The new holder must place more secrets here than the old secrets. So I'm putting two there. Then takes one from the old. And uh, the old holder takes the rest. All right. So really, I would have taken all of them if they were there. But now you can see there's two secrets there. It makes it a little more secure. He only has one secret right now, so it's definitely very secure from him. Now, what do I do? Let's see. I think I'm going to use... I'm going to go ahead and reveal Battle Honors as an advisor. I'm going to spend two supply to move up here, I'm going to trade with Sprawling Ramparts. So that's, I'm going to get two favor. I get one favor from Sprawling Ramparts and then one because I have a matching um, card there. Ah, Now, see, I want to campaign and get that back because of Sprawling Rampart. Do I campaign right now or do I muster first and then campaign? If I attack him right now... He's going to get, let me think, let me think about this. If I campaign right now, 
Um, attacking the mountain, so it's one defense, two defense from Sprawling Rampart, or two dice from Sprawling Rampart, plus one defense automatically from that warband. Uh, also, I lose one attack die, and I only be coming in with three attack dice in the first place. So I'm going to muster on the old oak, all right? So that's going to gain two warbands from the old oak, and muster costs one supply... All right, and so that's all I'm going to do. All right, that's going to be my turn. I have 16 warbands in my bank or in my supply over here or my, whatever it's called, 16 warbands that aren't out yet. So I recovered to there, plus I had one supply left over, so actually my supply goes up to there. Also, this will go to the beast bank. This comes back to me. That would have been at the end of the... It should be here right now because the Clockwork Prince is turned. Clockwork Prince goes to the end, not uh, because I'm the Chancellor. Okay, so it should be right here. All right, we're in the second round. All right, so Clockwork Prince is turned. Threat is still successor. He stays where he is because he's still in that quadrant, that same quadrant. If he had moved out of this quadrant to one of the other ones, then everything would reset back to that space again. All right, draw three cards. One, two, three. Okay. So still playing friend. None of these are friends, right? So look at the leftmost right here is arcane. That moves up. All right. And then out of these two, this is the leftmost. So this is the one he's going to play. These get uh, discarded to the provinces. So rusting ray. Now, is there anywhere that he can play this? Everywhere that he controls is already maxed out on cards. Uh, so this will get discarded as well. And again, gain two warbands and one tactic. So there's the tactic. All right, so now is he battle ready? Well, he's got four. He uh, and currently, actually, his rival right now is the bandits because the bandits control two. The bandits control two. I only control one. So he is battle ready. So he's going to move here. All right. And he's going to attack both the mine and the shrouded wood. He's going to campaign against the mine and the shrouded wood. Oh, no. He won't do that because he's only coming with four dice. Well, he's coming with, with five, actually. So, yeah, he will do that. He's coming with five. The bandits are going to roll two defense. So they have two plus the f plus one bandit here, one bandit there. So four total is what they have. So one, two, three. Oh, and and a half. That doesn't do anything. So only three. So we'll have to kill two of his war bands again to get to five to beat the bandits. And then the other two war bands. There and there. This is interesting. I could make a sweeping move here in a moment, maybe. We'll see. Anyway, that was his first action. He's getting two actions again. So the, let's see, rule the most sites. Yes, he does. All right. He has four sites right now. So rule the most sites. Shoot down to here. Need a banner. If both or neither go right, well, he needs both. So he's going to go this way, up to here. All right, does he hold the people's favor? No, he does not. All right, can he pay for the people's favor? No, he cannot. He doesn't have any favor right now. Uh, oh, higher priority, actually, anyway, is this one right here. He goes up to here uh, to muster, all right? And let's see. So he'll put... Oh, he doesn't have any favor to muster. So he can't do that. Hold on. So let's go back here. So if he goes... Oh, I'm sorry. He wouldn't be going to muster anyway. He'd be going up to this. To his question, it's asking if he's battle ready, um, which he's not. All right. So he goes down to here. All right. Uh, he's going to trade if trading in his site is possible, which it's not. 
So then he's going to move to where he can trade for the most money. Okay, now Arcane gets him one coin each. So this site is where he can get the most money. So he's going to move here. And that's his second action. All right, so we saw right there that had he been battle ready, he actually would have campaigned against me to get the people's favor. So, well, speaking of which, beginning of my turn, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So it is going to be important... It is going to be important for me to um, pick up this relic, the circlet of command, which prevents players from targeting uh, or taking my banners or other relics. So he would only be able to target the circlet of command. So the question is, do I campaign first or do I go get the circlet of command? I, oh, I actually don't have enough command for it i'd have to go down there and trade or have to trade where i'm at uh, that only has only one there anyway okay here's what we're gonna do we have one two three four we have five right now i'm going to muster so it gives me up to seven war bands and i'm going to campaign let's see all right so Let's 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 visualize this. So there's my seven. All right. Now, right now, actually, though, I'm going up against the mountain. So that's minus one. He has level two tactics. That's minus two. Oh, you know, I just realized something. Whenever he's drawing cards, if he draws battle plans. Let's look in here real quick. Let me see if if I remember. He drew that. That's a battle plan. I think he drew that too, didn't he? Yep. That's a battle plan. I don't think he drew that one. All right. But he definitely drew two battle plans, which means his tactics are too higher. All right. So he's actually taking two dice out of my my attack force if when he's a defender. And if I attack the mountain, that's three dice gone. And, oh, and he has a sprawling rampart, so he's gaining an extra die. All right, so that's what we're looking at right now. Oh, I didn't, when I mustered, by the way, I didn't. That needs to come down one. Okay. If I muster again. I really don't want to muster. I wanted to trade again, though. Uh, I feel like this is really cutting it close. Nah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna get, we're just gonna attack. But I see I want to attack the mine as well. All right, I am. I'm gonna muster one more time. So it takes one more supply, puts two more guys on my board. Okay, um, and so I put two more dice out, and that's so that I can attack the mine as well. So that's going to add one more die and one more because of the sprawling ramparts. This might be a really bad idea. All right, not terrible. So he ends up rolling four defense plus two warbands, so six total. One, two, three, four. Five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One dies from the skull. And then to be victorious, because I have to have more than him, I have to kill one more. And so that makes me victorious. So these two die. Now, half of them die rounded down. So one dies. And the other one goes back to his board. All right. And then I... Can put guys out, put at least one guy out, obviously. The sprawling ramparts, I really want to make sure. Let's do that because those are pretty important. Okay. All right. Pretty happy with that. So, oh, and then look, battle honors. If you're victorious, gain two from the order bank. Well, there's only one in the order bank, so I gain one. So then I think I'll actually 
Oh, I have to campaign, it costs two supply, by the way. All right, and then let's see what this is. Um, let's go down here. So it's the step, get one relic. Oh, and if we play a nomad card here, we'll gain a secret. That's pretty cool. It'll cost three to recover this uh, relic, which let's peek at that real quick. By the way, normally your relics would stay face down on the board, but since it's just me, I always turn them face up once I know what they are. Uh, dousing, stick, dousing sticks. Action. Draw a relic, take it, or put it at the bottom of the relic deck. Oh, it costs a secret, and you got to burn two favor. Okay. But that's my turn. So this will go to the beast bank. This goes to the order bank. I uh, think everything else on the board is good. And I've got 12, 14, so this goes up to here. Okay, still the successor threat. He is, notice, outside of the quadrant. So he's going to move back to this quadrant now. And then we got to draw the three cards. One, two, three. Oh, there's a vision there. All right, don't turn that over. All right, so neither of these are friends. So we go with the nomads become friends. All right, so this one. So back is discarded. Does he have anywhere he can play this? He does. Over there he does. Yep. All right, so. Oh, and it's a battle plan, so that moves up. He's now maxed out on tactics. So as long as, long as he's in control of Shrouded Wood over there. Oh, no, battle plans he has to be at, doesn't he? Yeah, battle plans is... Wait, does his pawn have to be there? No, his pawn doesn't actually have to be there. So as long as he rules that battle plan, the next time we fight, he's going to ignore all of my single shields. Next time he attacks me. All right. So, oh, and he... Oh, that's one thing I for, I've been forgetting. I, or maybe I didn't. No, I think I'm pretty sure I did. I did get it. Whenever I played that, I think I got a favor from Discord. He played that, so he gets a favor from Nomad. Gets two actions. Is he battle ready? He only has one right now, so he is not battle ready. Does he rule the most sites? He rules two sites. I rule three, so he does not. That was really the first question I should have asked. Then is he battle ready? All right, so now we come down to muster. He's going to place, he only has one favor. He'll place it here, and he'll muster twice, or he won't actually muster twice. He gains two warbands from mustering once. And then for his second action, move to where he can make the most money. He's already there, right? Yeah, he's already there. So, he, so that skips that action. So now he's going to trade. And so... This already has something on it, so it's not an empty card. So he just trades based off of this card. And we'll get one favor from Arcane. And that's his turn. All right. So this goes to the Arcane Bank. This goes over here. That goes there. So there you go. That was part one of our Oath playthrough. Got you through the first several rounds there. I've I have been enjoying this. The the bot is for sure a different beast, a different animal. Uh, it feels different than playing against people. I cannot wait to play this against other people. I've only played it solo so far. I'm 100% bring the first chance I get to play with more than uh, me. You know, because even if you play with two people, you still got to use the bot. So it's the first chance that I have three people at the table or more. This is coming out. Be sure to come back for part two so that you can win your sleeves for Oath. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.